Hi, in this video I'm going to show you how to put a button in the action bar on a configurable workspace um, and have it only show up on certain types of uh, records. So here we are in a configurable workspace. This is the CSM FSM configurable workspace and we are on a case record. There's different types of records we can view in this um, workspace. We've got case, task, customer, etc. In this case we're only interested in case and we want a button to show up. Um, this is the one I already um, configured. It shows up. It doesn't do anything. Um, in this video, I will only show you how to make the button appear, how to make it do something. That's going to be uh, the next video. So this is our goal for today. We want to add a button here. I've written a guide on how to do this on my website, jessems.com. It's linked in the description below. And uh, I'll be referring to this guide throughout the video because there's quite a few steps involved and I might forget some, so we might need uh, the guide. So without further ado, let's uh, dive right in. Um, in terms of prerequisites, you do need um, the CSM FSM um, plugin. Uh, so you can get that from, let me just regenerate this, uh, this view for you. So you can go to plugins. You can type in CSM, and then you need to find the CSM and FSM Configurable Workspace Foundation. Install this one. It takes, uh, takes a while, but once you have it, then you're able to access this uh, configurable workspace. And this is a good playground to, uh, to try this kind of stuff. Uh, as you see, I'm on my personal dev instance. All right, before we start, So there's a, a little trick we'll be using. If we type in actions A, what it does, it filters um, the actions and events module, and uh, those are exactly the, the menu items that we need. So we can just keep that here. We can pin the menu like this, uh, and then we have access to all the, the locations that we need for this, um, for this tutorial. Then, um, since we only want to manipulate the case record, and that's part of the CSM configurable workspace, we only need to concern ourselves with this um, with this update set. So you can just set the update set to CSM configurable workspace, which covers this record, uh, and we just stay in that update set and makes all the other steps um, sort of more palatable or easy. All right, so step one, uh, there's two steps to this process. One is to uh, declare the declarative action, and the other one is to tell um, ServiceNow where you want it to show up. So you tell ServiceNow you want to create a button, and then you tell it where to show up. So let's start by going to um, declarative actions. So you can select this one, but this one's already specified to an action bar. So we'll select that one. And we can just create a new one here. And then we need an action label. So we can say this is our crazy button. Crazy button. I think there might be a naming convention to that. Let me just double check. Um, yeah, it's kebab case. So let's get rid of this one. So that means it should be something like this. This is just to keep with the convention. Then uh, here, table is global. This one is important to leave at global because later on, um, when we define the form action, we need to refer back to this record. Uh, and we can only do so if we leave this on global. I know it's a bit confusing with the, um, with the scopes and the tables. There's other records with, that also have table fields. And, and in those cases, we do need to change them. In this case, we'll leave it on, on global. Then uh, specify client action. So here we're defining the button. And this is about defining the um, what the payload would be if you click the button. And so here we need to create a new record. And this is an action payload definition. And here there's also a convention um, so it's, it's called the screaming snake case I discovered today, but that's the, uh, that's the convention. So here we're defining our payload 
Um, because we're only focused on placing the button on the UI today, uh, I, don't, I don't need to define a payload because the button is not going to work anyway. If you do want it to get it to work, you do need to define something here, but it just complicates the tutorial, so I'm just going to leave it out for now. Um, applicable to, sorry. So here we do need to make it applicable and we make it applicable to form. Uh, we can have a look at the other options here. So you can make this, um, again, this is the payload definition. So you can make it apply to different um, components um, within the configurable workspace world, so to say. I, I'm not sure what they all mean, uh, to be honest, but in this case we need form because it appears on a, on a record form. And form shows up here, so that should be enough. There we go, crazy button. Um, view, I think that's good. Let's double check with my tutorial. Here we click, keep it as UXF client action, that's correct. Look up, that's correct. Make the label same as the key. Right, I think that's all there is to it. Cool, so we've defined or declared our uh, action button. And now what's left is for us to tell ServiceNow um, where it should appear. Um, for that, we need to go to the action layout list. So there's a form action layout. So here there, um, there will be a layout configuration, which is sort of like a container telling ServiceNow, listen, put these buttons there, put those over there. And each um, configurable workspace that you install through the, through the plugins and the ones that ship with a, with a default instance, they come with existing layout configurations. So you don't need to create your own. You can create your own. It's not part of this uh, video tutorial. You can do that. Um, there's just some extra steps involved. In our case, um, since we know we want to target this table, SN customer service case, what we can do, I believe, is search for that table here. And we see here two test layouts that I created while I was trying to figure out how to record this video. But then here, this one's out of box. This is the case actions um, layout configuration. So we can go in there and we can see here in the related lists that we've got some form action layout items. So these are things that show up. These could be um, buttons like the escalate case that's out of box, discuss is out of box. And here's the button that I defined earlier. So this is where we need to be. If you're doing um, a, something slightly differently, you're not following along step by step, then this is a place where you might get into trouble if you're using different scopes. So here you need to be careful. Because I selected the scope as CSM configurable workspace, I have an easy time now. I can just click new. If you're in a different scope, new won't even show up for you. So I click new. And here we uh, are defining a new UX form actions layout item. Okay, I think here we do change the table. Uh, we change it to the table that we want to target, which is the SMN, SN customer service case. And then here we say crazy button layout item, crazy button. This is the label, so this is what actually shows up. So let's turn it into something cool with an emoji. Item type is an action, that's fine. Um, what the action is, we need to define. So we're going to look that up. And here, uh, we've not defined a form action yet. So we're going to create a new one. And here, this might be slightly confusing. It was to me to begin with. Um, because this is already um, like a, a draft form, ServiceNow won't let you open up a lookup table inside one again it's sort of like too many layers of of looking up stuff um, at least that's what i think is what's going on because it grays it out even though that you are able to select things uh, there's one little cool trick to to select things anyways it's by typing double asterisk and you get sort of a drop down of of the available options 
In this case, we don't need UI action, we want declarative action. Um, but then we could do the same thing. And then we see here, crazy button. This is the, um, the declarative action assignment that we defined in step one. So that's the one we need to find here. And the only reason it shows up here is because we left that table value to global. That's important to remember if you if you try this and you get stuck somehow. This table value, on the other hand, we can change because we only want it to show up on this uh, customer service case. You see it, it blanked this out now as a result. That's okay. Crazy button form action, make it active. I think that covers all our bases. Okay, that's filled in here. We've got our label. I think we're good to go. Click Submit. All right, moment of truth. Boom, there's our crazy button. There's a little bit of internal logic where it shoves something under here. There's too many buttons, but you get the idea. It worked, it doesn't do anything. Again, that's for another tutorial, but the principle works. Thank you for watching.